Okay, good morning and welcome to Ion of Ben Sion. Uh, today we'll be doing Yivamos Kuf Yud 110. Um, the, Gemara, <coughs> the Gemara comes to a maskana over here. Uh, it doesn't actually come to a maskana. Similarly, the maskana of the Gemara is that we mentioned, we talked about before, the Mishnah said, I believe in the Kuf Zion, that Akhtana has the ability to get married, even though she doesn't have a father. So the, the father or the, or, the, or the mother or the brother marry off as Akhtana. It says Ladaita. It has to be Ladaita with her consent. And therefore, she's Mikudesh, she's Mikudesh in the Rabbana. And then, when she becomes of age, 12 years old and one day, and she has two pubic hairs, so she becomes Mikudesh's Midoraisa. So, do you need a Bia or do you not a Bia? You need a Bia or not. So, the Gemara suggests that Rav, who normally pass can be Suri, Rav and Shmuel, Rav seems to imply that you need a Bia. Right from the, the bottom of Kuf Tanamad Beis, and the Gemara challenges goes back and forth challenges whether you need a bia or not a bia. The Maskana of the Gemara seems to give two answers uh, to answer for Rav that Rav really, uh, really, really doesn't need a bia. That uh, sorry, that Rav would say you do need a bia. That a bia only, only the only way to make a kedusha daraisa is that when she comes of age, you need a kedusha. You need a bia, and that's the maskana of the Gemara. There's a weird case where someone stole a bride. In that case, really, technically, because there was no bia, either the answer was there was a bia, according to Rav. So therefore, that consummated the marriage of the when she came to Agdola. Or the case was that there were Afkin Rav on the Kiddushim, meaning they, uh, so even though there was no bia, the second one was invalid. But you really need a bia, and that seems to the maskana of the Gemara. The problem is the Rambam, and Torah Shalarach, Paskin, Lobal. You don't need Bia. And I think that's the Maskana. Once she goes to Gedola, if she had Kedush in the Rabbana when she's a Tana and she becomes of age and she doesn't reject him by that point, it's, it automatically becomes a Kedush in Del Raisa and they're married. So what's going on over here? These two start them. Do you need Bia or not need Bia? It's hard to understand because the Gemara Maskana seems to see, seems to say that you do need a Bia. We Paskin don't need a Bia. So which one is it? Um, The Gemara says, "Well, I'm going to give you just a simple explanation, and then I have a, I just thought of something now to, 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 to resolve my problem with the Gemara." Well, the seeming explanation, according to the Rambam and the Torah you don't need a bia. Why not? Because as I mentioned before, that even when she's a katana, she could have nisuin del raisa. It could be nisuin bila, would be, which is a consummate nisuin. She has any suin del raisa. But it said specifically in the mission that you need to be a midaita. When she gets married as a katana, it has to be with her consent. Now we said in Mesachas Kedushin, it says at the beginning of Mesachas Kedushin, and you can't do Kedushin Bal Korfa. Kedushin cannot be done Bal Korfa. And Isuin, Toso says at the beginning of Ksuvos, could we'll get to Ksuvos pretty soon, is, could be be done Bal Korfa. So obviously, the necessity of being daita, that you need the consent of the girl, the seven, eight year old girl, is necessary for the Kiddushin because Nisun doesn't need the Daita. So therefore, technically Nisun is dependent on a Bi'ila. We differentiate between a Bia and a Bi'ila. A Bi'ila is where you take a woman's needs into account. It's both of them enjoying a Bia, just the man enjoying. Um, so a Bi'ila, a Bia is for Kiddushin, a Bi'ila is for Nisun. So she had, could have a Nisun as a Ketana. The only thing that wasn't consummated is the Kiddushin of the Ketana. That or Masaki and Midar So how does it work when she comes to like Dola? So when it comes to Gdola, the reason that it works is because you have, right, you, you need two things. The reason a Kiddush Ektana is not valid unless it's the father is because it says Ish by Kiddush. And, and Isha, Isha is like Isha, Ish, just like an Ish needs to be a man who has Makadish has to be of age. So therefore the girl also has to be of age unless her father is being Makadish, right? which could work for Midah Raisa for Ektana. So she needs to be of age, she's not an Isha. When she comes in Isha, she comes to Gdola. So therefore, we always have her consent, unless she tells us otherwise. The chazaka is that she's consenting to this. So therefore, there's two things you need by kiddushin. You need, uh, you need the ma'isa kiddushin to give her a ring, let's say, to give her kesha kiddushin kesef shar bia, and you need uh, her consent, right? So what happens? You have her consent as a seven-year-old. Now we have a chazaka that she's consented to this kiddushin. Now once she becomes a gedola, so therefore, uh, there's no, no thing inhibiting anymore. Um, we had we he gave her the ring as a katana, but she still owns that ring, right? We're assuming she still owns that kesef. If she lost the kesef, maybe it wouldn't be valid. Maybe if she has that kesef over the star, it will be a discussion whether if she lost the kesef over the star, it's invalid. So she has the kesef over the star. She has the kesef. She she didn't relinquish her consent, 
she has to consent. It's just the deficiency was she wasn't an Isha. So now she's an Isha, she's of age, so automatically it converts from a Gdushin to a Gdushin to a Now, that would be the way of expl- I would explain it. I wasn't planning on anything explaining it. But now another thought p- popped in mind because the Gemara's Maskana really is that according to Rav, what we possibly like Rav in Isurim, is that really you need a, you need a Be'ilah. And the Gemara's focal point was this case in, in Narish where uh, she was Mikudeshes, which is a Tana, a Gadla. They brought her, they brought her, they were bringing her to the way to the Chuppah. And someone else snatched her. Another man came and took her and married her. So the, the Gemara says that the reason that, was, the reason that the second guy's condition was invalid was either because, uh, because the Gemara says that in the Minigan Narish was to mince of Nesibi, but how they're mostly a big Versailles. First they were together, like Arison, we'll see them in Sakha sometimes. And Yehuda, they were meyachin each other, and they had bia sometimes before the nisuin. Um, and then they put, then they brought her to the to, to the chupa. They brought her to the chupa afterwards, so they're on the way to the chupa. So they actually had bia before. I don't think I mean bi'ila. They probably had bia, right? Libo gaspa, the Gemara says. Uh, the second answer the Gemara says is that really uh, the reason the second one they didn't have bia, but you need bia. But the reason it wasn't valid is because they were mafkia the kedushim because he did shalok again. But either way, even according to Rav, it seems you need Bia according to the final Maskana. So I would like to say over here that you're right, that what happened was, like the Gemara says, you need Bia, but you don't need Bi'ila. That's what, that's what when we pass in the low Baal, you don't need Bi'ila, but you need Bia, because it's exactly what I was saying before, that Nisuin of Akhtana is valid with Raisa, because they can have a Bi'ila. Akhtana can have a Bi'ila, because he takes into account the needs of the woman. If the man is in charge, he's taking the account of the needs of the woman. But Bia, which is not exactly Baal Korach, he's not raping her, but it is... Um, more Baal Karcha, the so Bia is only coming for the man, the man is the only one enjoying it, so that effectuates a Kedushin. So that's what it meant. The Sibi over here, they were Miyachid before the marriage, before, they were Miyachid and they had a Bia. They had a Bia, not a Bia. So the Bia, so that, she's a Gdola now, and they have her consent, right, when she was a Ketan, she hasn't relinquished her consent, right, she has a Chazaka, there's Shela's consent, and then they did a Bia over here, they did a Bia, and one of the ways they're doing Kedushin is Kesef Shtar Bia. So now you have the Bia over here, you have the Bia, and she's a Gdola, and you have her consent, so it's a valid Kedushan because of the Bia. The other way, the first way of explaining it is because somehow she's still holding on to the Kesef or the Shtar. Um, it's hard to understand that because it has to be, right now, he has to give as a Gdola, she has to accept it as the head of the Shtar. So it's two ways of explaining it. I, I prefer the second one, actually, that now they're doing the Bia, and you would need a Bia just because by growing up uh, would not be good enough. You actually need a Bia, or a Kesef, or a Shtar, would be in order to finalize the Kedushin, to make her Mikudesh and Daraisa. And it still would already be Daraisa as a Ketana, but Kedushin and Daraisa, you would need Kesef, or a Shtar, or a Bia, in order to finalize it. That would be the Maskana I'd like to say over here. Hope you enjoyed. See you in Mishnah Yomi.